Hello. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak for you guys uh, this afternoon. Um, a lot of times when I, I struggle with, when I try to give a topical lesson or something, I um, try to come up with something new, um, something, you know, that, some new way of looking at it, and that's not really necessarily my strong suit. Um, and so I uh, think a lot about, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, and most everything that we speak on, um, you've probably all heard before. So I'm just going to do a um, chapter study, if you will, an expository uh, study on uh, James 1. And I was a little concerned that <laughs> Matt was going to take my uh, thunder, if you will, um, and he did a much be- he would have done a much better job. But um, so I'm just going to uh, kind of go over the, the first uh, chapter in James. It's one of those that I find myself a lot um, going back to. It's one of my favorites, and I know it gets uh, taught on quite a bit. But I find there, you know, there are a few um, uh, books that I'll, I will refer back to um, on the regular as just a good reminder, and this is one of them. Um, uh, and so I kind of want to just uh, go through this. What I think I'll do is um, I'll just read a few, a few verses at a time in different sections and kind of just give a few thoughts on them, um, and we'll kind of go from there. It's interesting uh, that you can get um, there. I guess there's some debate on whether or not this uh, was written to who this was written to specifically, um, whether it's Jews or uh, people outside of Jerusalem or if it was to Jews. Um, Really, it doesn't matter. And it seems a lot of the commentaries um, agree that it's something that can apply to almost everyone, if not everyone. Um, whether it is Jew or Gentile or, you know, in certain spots, it, it's just very applicable to, to our lives. So, um, st- oh, I'm just going to start in verse 2 because one kind of is self-explanatory. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes in the, in the dispersion. Greetings. He says in verse 2, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have, it, have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If, you, if any of you lacks wisdom, let, let him ask God, who gives, the, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Um, and it's interesting, you know, when you think about trials, it, and, and you're supposed to count it all joy. That can be really difficult if you think, oh yeah, great, this is happening to me. But it kind of goes back to um, what I had said before um, in my previous lesson about um, looking at the bigger picture and not looking at, oh yeah, this is happening to me right now, and this is, um, I'm supposed to be joyous, for example, about my arms broken or something like that. I, that's not really what it's, um, what it's kind of referring to. Um, it's talking more about looking at how this can make you um, stronger, how these trials can produce patience, um, growth. This is something that it's interesting. We, we, we see it in other aspects of our lives to where we uh, appreciate growth and we want that growth. Um, you, I can think about, you know, going to school, for example. Um, I, maybe this is after high school because you're kind of forced to up, up to that point. But um, you go to college so that you can grow in your knowledge, so that you can um, become smarter about something. And uh, that, that is exactly the same thing that um, I think that he's trying to uh, impress upon us now is this growth will, co- will make us better. It will, um, these trials will make us better in, uh, in, that, in that aspect. And then um, similar, I think Matt mentioned this a little bit this morning, this idea of confident, being, being confident that God will, um, will, take, will provide. Um, that he, God wants us to have that, that confident faith. He wants us to ask with a mindset of knowing that it's going to happen or it's going to be answered. And that's the interesting part too is 
um, when you say we have to be confident that God will answer, and that answer may not always be what we um, are looking for, um, but he will answer it, um, and he wants us to have that confidence. Um, and it reminds me, I don't know how many of you uh, watch the, uh, the Chosen at all, and it kind of brings it to the forefront, but if you think about Matthew 8 um, in, uh, with the centurion, how he had the faith and the confidence to go directly to Jesus and ask him to heal his servant, um, when there could, like, he, he was completely confident that, that he could do it. Um, he wasn't confident that he would do it, but he was confident that he could do it um, if he uh, so wanted to. So it's, it's an interesting way of um, looking at um, trials in the sense that it will always bring us uh, to a better understanding if, we're, if we um, put our faith in God and ask him with confidence. <clears throat> So going on in verse uh, 9 through 11, it says, Let the lowly brother boast in his exultation, and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and and withers the grass. Its flower falls and the beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. And this one, I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of always overlook that. Like I understood, okay, yeah, the, like you hear that a, a bunch throughout the New Testament, um, this idea of that the poor in, in, um, in ri- those that are poor are going to be exalted and the ones that are rich, not necessarily. And, but it's interesting that um, kind of going back to the more you read this, the new stuff you learn all the time. What, what he's meaning here, at least from what I can tell, is that not to boast in the riches that this poor person has come into, into play. It's thinking if you were poor and now all of a sudden um, you have riches, not to boast in the things that you have, but to boast in what you've gained from the trial and the success that you've had from that trial of may, maybe having being with less. And then on the flip side is the rich in his humiliation there's also that, that idea of um, uh, rejoicing in the fact that now your uh, faith or your, um, your righteousness, for example, is, is now going to be tested. And you can, you can kind of, it's that growth, that idea of in whatever situation you're in, you can grow. And this idea that looking past the, the, the uh, things of this world, the the thing maybe if you're poor and you don't have a lot and there's the stress of everything going on or how are we going to uh, pay for this and all that all of that comes back to this mindset of looking to the bigger picture looking to um, the the real reasons and growing from uh, looking past the temporary and looking towards the future um, and then going on in verse uh, 12 it kind of lays that um, kind of put sums all that up i feel like i feel like verse 12 is really sums up sums up everything to this point it says blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which god has promised to those who love him let no one say when he is tempted i am being tempted by god for god cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to, the, to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift of, actually, I think I, no, yeah, every good gift um, and perfect, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father's, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of the of truth that we should be a a kind of first fruits of his creatures so here in verse 12 it's saying if we can if we can uh have that that larger mindset of not that temporary mindset um and we hold steadfast through these trials not wavering in our confidence that god will provide um we will ultimately um, that's the success. <laughs> that is um, how we get to uh, eternal life, the crown of life. 
um, if we put our trust in God and obey him and, and follow that, that mindset of not thinking about what's happening to me right now and what this is going to accomplish in my life and maybe in others, um, then it, uh, that's ultimately what he's trying to, to say here. And then it goes on uh, talking about um, how God cannot tempt us. You know, that's one of, I feel like, a very stereotypical thing that a lot of us maybe from time to time uh, can find ourselves asking is, why would God uh, do this to me? Why is he tempting me with this if he knows that I don't? And this right here, I don't know if we can say it any more plainly, is not, it's not God tempting us. You know, that's his way of, um, he may allow things to happen, um, but that is one of the ways that we are, um, uh, we become a better Christian is by these trials. And I think I think it's, it's similar to, you think about a parent and child where a, a child in the moment may want some candy or, you know, lots of sugar, uh, and the kid is asking his parents and the parents are saying, no, you've had plenty, you're going to have a, a stomach ache or you're going to um, have some, you're going to get sick because of that. In that moment, the kid's like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you um, <laughs> causing me such heartache, if you will, in that, in that moment? Uh, but it's because the parents have a better understanding of what is good for that child. And I think it's similar with God. He, he knows what we can and cannot handle, and he knows what we um, need to sharpen our faith and our, um, our Christian walk. And it's up to us to make the right decisions going on, you know, it, when the reality is most of the temptations that we come in contact with our by our own desire that's how that is how that um plays out i guess and so just that idea of uh knowing that if we are steadfast and we push through knowing that it may be hard now but ultimately it will um, make us better uh will help us come out on top if you will And then uh, the next uh, couple verses, verses 19 through 21, it says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So there's three, uh, three things here that, that James really pulls out and I think can... I'm not going to say in every situation, but in a lot of situations can, I, I think, help us come out on top. Um, and it's some that I know that I definitely need to be uh, better at. Uh, that's quick to hear. Uh, not always, um, it's very easy, I know for me, to be thinking about how I'm going to respond to something before. How, what can I do? Um, and how can I come back at whatever somebody else is saying? And especially if you're in a t trial, it can be very hard to listen, to actually hear what, what is being said. And so I think that's the, the idea here is we need to first and foremost listen and hear, um, whether it's a spiritual trial, hear the, the word and what it has to say, or if it's just in a, um, a more physical trial. Uh, and then slow to speak. That's the, that kind of, they kind of go hand in hand not maybe the best course of action is just to not say anything um it can be very easy and i think we'll get down to that towards the end of the chapter to want to just talk and and um try to talk your way out of something if you will uh but here it's definitely a a um something of value is to be slow to speak and then slow to anger i think if you're quick to hear and slow to speak most likely the anger will be harder to come quickly. Um, and, you know, it says, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Uh, plain and simple, anger is not, is not how you are going to get um, to have a more righteous life or be closer to God. Anger is usually what will draw you further from that. And so it's this idea, I, I really like when it says that meekness, uh, receive with meekness the implanted, uh, the implanted word, where if we are 
looking at the Bible and receiving the words of God in a humil- uh, humble way and with meekness, more than likely it's going to shape us in a better way and it's going to help us become to a better understanding of the word. It's very easy to, um, to just think I have it all and, and I've got it all figured out and uh, this kind of prideful look when you go to the Bible is, let me look to the Bible to show where I'm right. Um, it can be very hard to come to a better understanding and, and probably a more truthful understanding with that, with that mindset. Um, and then it goes on in verse uh, 22 through 25. But be, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got ahead of myself. Yeah, then it goes on, on in verse 22 through 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Um. I really like this, and I appreciate uh, Kevin's prayer um, bringing this up, it, this idea of not just listening to it and then going about our daily lives. We have to actually act on that. Um, I, you know, it's, it's very difficult, and, or it's very easy when we're here to nod and you know, say amen and agree with things that are going on, but then to go and act on those and apply those to our lives is difficult uh, for, for me at least. Um, and I've known of plenty of people that would be doer, or would be uh, hearers, or they would use that quick to speak instead of slow to speak, and are very quick to to point out flaws and find things that are wrong. But in reality, they weren't actually applying it to their lives. And I, most of them are um, not even uh, in the church anymore. And um, it's it's just one of those things that it can be almost a toxic thing to hear it and not do anything about it because you can find yourself living two different lives, um, one at church and then one, you know, in the rest of, rest of the the week. And so it's, um, it's just a really uh, good thing that we need to consider. Um, And then, uh, Just that idea we need to be walking the walk and not necessarily and do less talking of the talk uh if you will you know it's um going going back to to um just being quick to hear and slow to speak that's something that it, it's very easy to talk about all the great things but if we're not doing it um it really is um Harder. And that kind of brings into the last couple of verses here in verse 26 and 27. It says, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but dece- let me start that over. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself un- unstained from the world. Um, that first verse kind of sums up the, the um, 19 through 25, just that idea of it can be very easy to talk the talk and deceive your own self thinking, I'm, I'm this very righteous person, I'm saying all these great things, um, but that's a deception of your heart and you're not looking at the, it comes back to that receiving the word with meekness. Um, It can make whatever you're doing, especially if you're saying one thing and someone sees you doing something else, it really makes everything that you're saying (laughs) kind of worthless. Um, And you're just, you're doing it out of, out of a, or if if this, we're doing this out of a uh, a place of, of myself instead of how can I um, be humble in receiving that word. And 
And then, it, I mean, it, a perfect example is that last uh, bit, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. That's very like a non-public thing. That, it doesn't say, oh, and to talk, um, to talk about all the great things that you're doing and, and tell other people uh, what they're doing wrong. It's, it's interesting, too, to think about um, this when you think about probably who... James was thinking about it at that time, the, the Pharisees and how they were all about the talk, but they weren't walking or they weren't walking the walk. And um, just that idea of we're supposed to be humble and, um, and meek and look out for others rather than trying to boast ourselves in uh, whatever we're doing. I think that's all I have um, tonight. I know that was kind of short, but I, I, again, when I, when I struggle to come up with um, what I want to speak about, I feel like a lot of times letting the word um, do the talking is a lot more effective than anything I could say. So I hope that uh, this has been beneficial. Um, we never want to close the service without op- offering the invitation. If, uh, you're here and you haven't obeyed the gospel, um, there, there are some steps that y- you need to take, and that's uh, hearing the word of God, Romans 10, uh, 17, and believing, uh, that Jesus, uh, believing in Jesus, Mark 16, and verse 16, and then repent of your sins, Acts uh, 2, 38, uh, then confess that Jesus is the Son of God, um, Acts 8, and verse 37, and then to be baptized, Acts 22, and verse 16. Um, so if you haven't taken those steps and you would like to do that, now is the time to, to do that. If you have taken those steps but um, feel you need the prayers of the church or would uh, like to make a request of the church on your behalf, uh, now is that time to do that. So let us come and, uh, while we stand and sing.